Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. Adam West is Batman. We left this world for Gotham City when we put on those costumes. And we loved it. As the duly deputized agent of the law, I place you under arrest. I think Adam West was brilliant. It would have been really difficult to have found somebody better. You jolly devil. Adam West was a self-mocking symbol of all that was wild, fresh, and fun in the 1960s. His dashing looks and comic flair lifted him from obscurity to superstar. As Adam West, how do you drive in a car? But after climbing to the top, the high living actor faced a villain even Batman couldn't beat, typecasting. Do you recognize me? And it would take two painful decades for West to make the transition from primetime superhero to pop culture icon. Adam West! Who loves Adam? People. People like Adam West. He was just a different cat. Hello, nice to be indoors. My father's always been very hardworking, very intellectual, and at the same time, a total goofball. Pure West. The man who became an idol to millions of baby boomers was born William West Anderson, near Seattle, Washington, on September 19, 1928. His father, Otto, was a soft-spoken farmer. His mother, Audrey, was a talented singer who had dreamed of Hollywood stardom. But she settled unhappily for life on Otto's quiet farm in Walla Walla, where she buried her depression in alcohol and extramarital affairs. There's a curse running through our family of alcoholism and, and manic depression and uh, and that, that's basically what his, his mother suffered from. Young Bill inherited his father's serious work ethic, and Audrey's illness often forced him to be a surrogate parent to his younger brother, John. His mother's volatility also pushed the boy known as Wild Bill further into a world of fantasy. As a child, Bill loved to imagine himself living the adventures of his favorite movie heroes. His whole life he wanted to be a cowboy. So he loved to go to the movie theater for a nickel and watch all the great cowboys. And I think those guys kind of made an impression on him to become an actor. Influenced by his love of movies and his mother's passion for all things dramatic, Bill decided by his teens to become a performer. After his mismatched parents divorced in 1943, he was thrilled to move with his mother and brother to the bustling city of Seattle. There, the 14-year-old was enrolled at Lakeside High School, where he soon showed off his serious and wild sides. He did well in sports. He was president of his graduating class at school but he was into making mischief. He stole a school bus one night to take a date to the prom, and he got a bunch of trouble for that. Moving on to nearby Whitman College, the handsome 21-year-old earned a degree in literature and psychology. He also fell in love with a pretty department store employee named Billy Lou Yeager, and in 1950, the pair married. But Bill Anderson hadn't forgotten his ambition to act. He channeled his off-the-wall humor into work as a radio DJ and helped launch a military television station where his passion for deadpan comedy continued to grow. Hawaii was Bill's next career stop when in 1955 a college friend offered Anderson the role of sidekick on a local TV kitty program called The Kini Popo Show. He had a great time. This was an opportunity to live in this paradise and be on television and live this sort of hedonistic beach existence. In Hawaii, 28-year-old Bill became a local celebrity among children and adults. 
The only role he couldn't play was that of a conscientious husband, and in 1956, when his neglected wife asked for a divorce, Anderson blamed only himself. But Bill wasn't alone for long. That same year, he fell in love with a beautiful island dancer named Na Dawson. My dad saw her dancing, and um, I, I think it was just one of those lust uh, things, I gotta have you, she said, I gotta have you. The pair married in 1957, and within two years, Bill became the proud father of two children, Janelle and Hunter. My dad's work, it took 100% of his time, but um, he still had 100% to give to the family, and it was amazing that he could do that. The would-be actor still dreamed of greater stardom, but ironically, it was his day job as an island tour guide that gave him his break. One day, his camera-ready looks caught the eye of a visiting TV agent who arranged for a Hollywood screen test. To Anderson's delight, his striking physique and smooth baritone won him a contract at Warner Brothers. Adam was a guy from a small town in Washington, so to come to Hollywood, oh, when he was a kid dreaming about being an actor, here he was, and he got a contract. He changed his name to the more dynamic Adam West, and he began to learn his craft in a range of television roles. That training paid off in 1959, when 31-year-old West got a part in the Paul Newman drama, The Young Philadelphians. The next year, his childhood dream of playing the hero came true, with a recurring role on the hit TV series, The Detectives. Matt? Maybe I did run. Oh, now wait a minute, Steve. I said I was going around to cover the rear, but maybe I was running from that fight. But that's a lot of nonsense. Matt, I was afraid last night. More afraid than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> With bullets flying all over the place, I wouldn't be afraid. This was different. In those few seconds, I felt it, the fear. I could taste the fear choking me. If I hadn't run out on him, he'd be alive right now. The detective was Adam's really first big break in Hollywood. That put him on the map. But as Adam West's career gained momentum, his personal life was again on the rocks. In 1962, Adam was devastated when his lonely wife, Na, left him for another man. He was uh, very pained by the fact that his second marriage fell apart. He loved Na very deeply and loved his children and never really got enough time to spend with them. West also grew frustrated as he tried to become more than a busy but little-known actor. Despite a steady stream of supporting roles in film and TV, his dream of stardom seemed increasingly out of reach. Just one, take one. W what are you doing dressed? Are they uh, evacuating the building or something? What a thing to say. Can't I put on some clothes without evacuating the building? On Thursday afternoon? At four o'clock? Oh, baby. What's the matter? I don't know, nothing. Well, what is it, baby doll? You hate me. Even during his lean years, Adam was still developing his most unusual quality, his gift for quirky, straight-faced comedy. It doesn't matter if she cries. Maybe I, she'll drop back home. If it's from the second floor, I'd like to give her an assist. Madeline, have you got a sleeping pill? A shot of whiskey? Crying is it's good for her. It's good exercise. Please, it won't Madeline. Work. She has to be changed. Oh, the dear girl. Oh, the dear soaking wet baby girl. Oh, my God. Wet? Oh, but what a good girl. Bobby, isn't it wonderful? Hey, what's the matter? The fire is out. <laughs> but by 1965, Adam had few chances to use that talent. 
The best job he had was playing straight man to the Three Stooges in the Western spoof, The Outlaws is Coming. Here they is, the world's biggest nuts at their wackiest, in the wildest shootout ever to fracture the screen. Discouraged by his prospects in America, Adam traveled to Italy to star in the spaghetti western, The Relentless Four, a low-budget knockoff of The Magnificent Seven. He considered staying in Europe to follow in the footsteps of his friend Clint Eastwood, who was becoming a star thanks to Italian westerns. But Adam's future was about to take a surprising turn, thanks to a commercial he'd made in which he used his comic flair to send up the current James Bond craze. I see automation displaces labor in your organization too, Dr. Slough. Ah, oh, Captain Q, join me in a glass of delicious chocolate quick, won't you? Thank you, Doctor. I could use some energy. And that Nestle's chocolate flavor is... The very best, Doctor. Incidentally, one of those torpedoes you fired at me was circling and... You're sunk. To the loo! Get thank you! Some people will do anything to get rich, quick. To loo. Among those impressed by the ad was TV producer William Dozier, who was searching for an actor that could handle both action and comedy. And the resulting show would catapult Adam West from struggling actor to superstar. Since his creation in 1939, the crime-fighting superhero Batman had been a fixture in American entertainment. The character had evolved from comic books to movie serials of the 1940s, which closely followed the comic's melodramatic traditions. But in 1965, television producers William Dozier and Charles Fitzsimons set out to bring a knowing touch of satire to Batman and his stuffier alter ego, Bruce Wayne. It had to be played with total sincerity. You've got to find an actor uh, who is prepared to play Alice in Wonderland as though it were Hamlet. Test X1. Adam was amazing. Looks black as pitch, Dick. I've been through all my father's old law books. I don't see we have a leg to stand on. My identity exposed. My value as a secret crime fighter ended. Everything I have trained myself for since my parents were murdered gone in the ash can up the chute it's too terrible to face Test X1 10. he had humor in his speech humor in his reactions quick wit and it's dry it's an address I get it 222 Glover Avenue you've done it John 222 Glover Avenue that's the address of the new discotheque. What's the Riddler's game? Hold up the wealthy patrons? Could be. It's a famous haunt of high society. Let's just hope we're not too late. Let's go. I'll rev up the Batmobile. Wait a minute, Robin. They won't let you in. You're underage. It's the law. 37-year-old Adam relished the script's tongue-in-cheek tone and signed on to star. But slipping into Batman's character proved easier for Adam West than slipping in and out of his form-fitting wardrobe. It's not fun to wear tights. Sometimes you even walk funny. But I love the cowl, because the moment I pull on that cowl, suddenly I become the character. See, that's how I triggered it physically. Although Adam had confidence in the pilot, some ABC executives hated the show especially after a disastrous test screening. It was the lowest rating they had ever had on anything. Now, had they not already bought the show, ABC, it would never have gone on the air. Adam knew that his entire career was at stake the night Batman premiered amid a wave of promotion on January 12, 1966. That Wednesday night, 
the caped crusader came through for Gotham City and for Adam West. Hold it, Riddler. The game's up, Riddler. As the duly deputized agent of the law, I place you under arrest for armed robbery. Snap on the bat cuffs. You've got me, Batman. I thought Adam West was tremendously effective. He had lines that really weren't funny lines, but yet he made them funny. Yes? Batman, it's Robin. Robin, old chum. Where are you? Ho, ho, ha, ha. Remember me, old chum? You jolly devil. The key to Batman was a, a line that was in the pilot when Batman comes in in his full bat costume. Please, it's Batman! Anything I can do for you, sir? Check your tape? And the, the maitre d' walks up to him and says, Ringside table, Batman? Ringside table, Batman? And he replies, uh, Just look, thanks, I'll stand at the bar. I shouldn't wish to attract attention. Batman was a ratings blockbuster and the life of its star would never be the same. His life completely changed within 24 hours. The next day, he couldn't even go to the supermarket. He had a beach house and people were like clamoring at his windows. Adam was mobbed by children and adults alike. West's image adorned the covers of dozens of national magazines as viewers tuned in twice a week to see TV's hippest show. It was a show that had humor and a writing style like no other. Batman took elements of adult culture and spoofed them within the context of a children's show, which in primetime television had never really occurred. Hollywood's top actors jostled to join Batman's all-star roster of villains. And as its success grew, the series' writers played up its fresh vein of self-satire. The comic book character of Batman is just dumb. Suddenly he started getting witty. He'd never been witty before. Suddenly the villains started having a little edge to them. If I were to kiss you, would you think I was a bad girl? But, uh, no. No, of course not. Catwoman. Kissing is one of the most natural things in the world. Uh, some people kiss almost every day, and I'm told. It's brilliantly written. That's the most important thing in any script, in any show. And it was brilliantly cast. The atmosphere was fun and fast and humorous and easy. Adam would constantly kibitz. Have fun, make it light, make it fun. Watch it, chum. The dust are in safety. Oh, sure. Sorry. At first, the camaraderie between Batman and Robin was not felt off-screen. West considered 20-year-old newcomer Burt Ward self-absorbed and temperamental. It was the first thing that Burt ever did. Naturally, Burt had a lot of insecurities, which made him a pain in the beep, but many times. But there were so many times that you understood it, you understood why, you have the patience for it, and Burt grew, he developed. We were completely opposite. Adam had been in many shows, tremendous background, terrific actor, but very Mr. Hollywood. I mean, he wanted his tea at four o'clock in the afternoon. And me, I'm just like this kid that doesn't care having a good time. And I think that's one of the reasons that the public liked it, because Adam was very introspective. And I'm just this exuberant kid. By the end of the show's first season, Adam West and the Cape Crusader had become national icons. Where'd you get the idea for this hairstyle, Margaret? One evening I was watching The Batman on television. Batmania swept America and the entire world. The biggest craze was the merchandise. There were more Batman gadgets, you know, than you could shake a stick at. Lunch boxes, cups, everything in the world. They sold like hotcakes. Adam was thrust into the kind of celebrity that 
during the 60s was reserved for the Beatles, James Bond. Do the Russians have anything to fear? Actually, no. If their hearts are pure. The actor also loved going out on the town with some of Hollywood's most glamorous females. He took on this extraordinary bachelor life. Adam relayed a funny story to me one time that when he and Frank Gorshin attended one of the myriad orgies in the 60s, which were de rigueur for superheroes and supervillains, they were causing such a ruckus that they were actually asked to leave. But Adam West took his Batman celebrity very seriously when it came to keeping up the Cape Crusader's image in the eyes of his youngest fans. We had kids on the set all the time, and Adam was wonderful with the kids. He would visit with them between setups and let them come and sit on his knee, and the kids had a ball. He was so proud of being Batman. He was in such demand for personal appearances and everything. He was always going off someplace to appear in big uh, arenas and football uh, uh, coliseums and everything. He loved every minute of it. Emergency. Batman speaking. Warning all of you to brace yourselves for big news. The biggest. In the summer of 1966, Adam won even more fame with the role when he signed on at a salary of $100,000 to star in a big screen version of the show. The theatrical feature Batman pitted the superhero against Frank Gorshin's Riddler, Burgess Meredith's Penguin, <laughs> Cesar Romero's Joker, and Lee Merriweather's Catwoman. Their minimum objective must be the entire world. Adam West was effective as Batman and Bruce Wayne because Adam West is two people. He has that straight normal side, which is Bruce Wayne. Take the service elevator, meet me in the back cave, emergency. And then he has that wild, fun, wacky side, which would be the Batman side. In the motion picture, they are trying to get rid of a bomb. Four or five times, they try to get rid of it. And he stopped and says, Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. That was a tough role to play, you know, because you had to be careful. It could have been just out and out ridiculous. And uh, he was great. But even as Batman, the TV show, returned for a second hit season, time was running out for the Cape Crusader. Brace yourself, Robin. This could be the end. And soon, Adam West would struggle to find a life outside the Cape and Cowl. Keep an eye on the scope. Watch for suspicious vessels. I'm watching, Batman. By 1967, Adam West had spent two years riding the wave of fame. But as Batman began production on its third season, the 39-year-old actor had reason to worry. ABC had cut the show from two nights a week to just one. And as ratings began to dip, Batman's producers decided to add some female sex appeal to the dynamic duo. Holy apparition! No, boy, wonder I'm Batgirl. Is the dynamic duo destined to become the triumphant trio? What delightful dynamic destruction. Which couldn't have been accomplished without you. For West, the addition of actress Yvonne Craig as Batgirl seemed a desperate move. But with time, Adam grew to like his new co-star. The nice thing they did for me was they made big eye holes for me because Adam's cowl left him virtually blind. I mean, every step forward and down that he took was an act of faith because he didn't have much vision at all in that thing. But changing the dynamic duo into the triumphant trio didn't deliver a knockout ratings punch. The cost was killing us. The sets were expensive. The special effects were expensive. 
the joke was over after two or three years, and uh, I think the public started to get a little bored with it. In 1968, West was stunned and deeply disappointed to learn that Batman would not return for a fourth season. The actor loved playing the role and reveled in the worldwide fame it brought him. Still, Adam was sure he could do much more than play the caped crusader. And he was confident he could make the leap from TV stardom to the big screen. But as weeks went by, the actor's telephone did not ring. And slowly, the 40-year-old realized that typecasting had brought his career to a dead end. I got clobbered pretty hard. The downside in a race that you're winning is, of course, when you cross the finish line and you collect the purse, the flash bulbs stop popping, and it's all over. You, you say, hey, what happened? I'm still here. Where's everybody else? Batman was a child of the 60s. And that also cast Adam into a time warp uh, where people thought of him purely and simply as a, an example of what was popular at that period of time. As months dragged by, West's frustration turned to deep depression. Acting jobs were few and by 1970 his payments for Batman reruns had stopped. As job offers dwindled, the ex-superstar turned to alcohol to numb his pain. He's always struggled with depression. It's sort of a curse in our family. And he's struggled very hard with it, but he's definitely overcome it um, just through his efforts because he wants to. West refused to give up hope that his career would rebound, and occasionally a good part came his way. One was a supporting role in the 1971 drama, The Marriage of a Young Stockbroker, starring Richard Benjamin. Am I to understand that you have treated Chester? You certainly. But, and I don't mind adding that his whole adjustment is due to that. Wouldn't you say so, dear? Chester? I would, dear. If it weren't for Dr. Sadler, we wouldn't be where we are today. <laughs> Doctor, instead of pretending that you help people, why not just say you have to make a living and there's this thing you've learned to do with people and a couch. There's your money. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. Bill? No matter how bad things may be, they always could be worse. By the early 1970s, Adam realized he could not outrun his past. With an overwhelming sense of failure, the actor agreed to make personal appearances in his Batman costume at county fairs, rodeos, and circuses. One of the turning points in his career when he was offered um, a lot of money to be shot out of a cannon in Evansville, Indiana. That was definitely one of the low points in his career. Being inside of this cannon, it was such a major humiliation for him, not only as an actor, but he felt that his dignity as a man had just been shredded. But Adam's travels as Batman also led to one of the happiest events of his life. In the late 1960s, West appeared in costume at a promotion for Lear Jets, where he posed with executive John Lear and his young wife, Marcel. My mom's from France, and they don't have superheroes in France. They don't have grown men who dress in funny costumes. And so she thought Batman was a total freak. In the photo, you have my mom and her two children, and she is clutching her kids away from my dad because <laughs> he's such a weirdo. But West could not forget the beautiful Marcel. And after learning of her separation from John Lear, the actor embarked on a romantic courtship. My father was filming a, a Western in, in Rome, and he knew my mom was around Geneva somewhere. 
So he flew to Geneva and just looked for her there and ran into her on the street. And she decided to give him a chance because he had, he had gone that far to pursue her. Adam West and Marcel Lear married in 1970. Their enduring union gave the actor two more children that he adored, Perrin and Nina, and a wife who gave Adam's life a new foundation. My dad had a lot of support out of my stepmother, and you know everybody around him still said, "You're number one. You're you're the greatest." And you know even if your career's not doing as well, you're still when you come home, you're still the greatest. It's great to be here in Kansas City. It's great to be anywhere. With a young family to support, West took whatever work he was offered over the next decade. Do you recognize me? Yeah. You, do you really? Yeah. I'll just stand here for a few moments and let you admire my incredible crime-fighting physique. Anyway, I better not stand up here and talk too long because I don't want you to have to wait too long. And I know what the kids do when you wait with the kids and on your necks and sometimes the accidents. Uh, anyway, uh, you like my ears? Besides occasional appearances in the Batsuit, he tackled everything from quality projects like the Burt Reynolds comedy Hooper to low-budget embarrassments like The Happy Hooker Goes Hollywood. But Adam West's persistence was about to be rewarded. In the late 1980s, the struggling actor would enjoy a dramatic comeback, thanks to the very superhero who had sidelined his career. On September 19, 1988, Adam West turned 60. He was still in terrific health, but after 20 years trying to outrun Batman's shadow, the actor decided it was time for a break. Adam moved with his devoted wife Marcel and their children to the peaceful remote town of Ketchum, Idaho. It was basically my father returning back to his, his roots. It was a really healthy environment for him and for a family to grow up in. Van Williams, who played the Green Hornet, is our neighbor, and he and my father have become great friends, and it's sort of funny to see them cavorting around Ketchum together. Fortunately, Hollywood had not forgotten Adam West, or the character that made him a phenomenon. Here are the stars of that show, The Caped Crusaders, Adam West and Burt Ward. In 1988, two decades after Batman's cancellation, its cast reunited for the first time on a Fox Network late night talk show. Does this, uh, uh, this kind of response surprise you 22 years later, or is this... Uh... Holy adulation! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ross, Ross, that's the wonderful thing about uh, being a part of this uh, thing called Batman. People always have uh, a wonderful warmth and rapport wherever we go in the world. Yeah, it seems uh, that it's, way. Uh, I guess we've just been around that long, I don't know. <laughs> By the late 1980s, Batman was more than a memory as moviegoers around the world awaited a new big-budget feature starring Michael Keaton. But the project was a source of deep disappointment for West, who was hurt to be shut out from involvement in the year's hottest blockbuster. What Adam was hoping for and really deserved was the chance to make an appearance in that movie. But unfortunately, the producers did not show the respect to Adam's 22-year legacy and the legions, the millions of fans that he had amassed for the Batman franchise. He was disappointed in, in the new Batman just because it wasn't child-friendly. He was protective of the character. Despite the actor's disappointment, the hype and success surrounding director Tim Burton's movie would give Adam's career a major boost. In 1989, he was happy to star in a publicity campaign for the original series, which returned to airwaves around the world to coincide with the new film. Batman is bigger than ever, and now's the perfect bat time for audiences to get another look at all 120 half hours of one of the best produced and most successful shows in the history of television. There may be others in the field, but no one can duplicate the enormous power of TV's classic, Batman. Adam became a huge celebrity, made a major press tour of London, and was soon 
touring around the United States, and Adam was ecstatic. West was also thrilled to realize that the performers and producers, now on top in Hollywood, were children of the 1960s, who'd grown up idolizing Adam as Batman. Once again, the doors of Hollywood began to open. During the 1990s, West made appearances on many of America's most popular TV shows. Among them, The Simpsons, a series created by another of his childhood fans, Matt Groening. I have all the people we've had on the show, and we've had a lot. But Adam West really got all these guys <laughs> to come out of their writer's offices and actually sit there and go, Oh my God, it's Batman. <laughs> oh, I guess you're only familiar with the new Batman movies, Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> the only true Catwoman is Julie Newmar, Lee Merriweather, or Eartha Kitt. And I didn't need molded plastic to improve my physique. Pure West. And how come Batman doesn't dance anymore? Remember the bat to see? <clears throat> West also loved starring in a 1991 TV pilot titled Look Well. Created specially for Adam, it was co-produced by former Simpsons writer Conan O'Brien and remains a cult favorite among Hollywood insiders. You know, I recognize you. Aren't you Ty Look Well? Yes, but until this audition's over, I prefer to be addressed as Buzz McCool. Well, it's nice to meet you. You know, I remember Banachek. That was a great show. No, I wasn't Banachek. That was George Papard. I was Bannigan. Brannigan? No, that was Hugh O'Brien. I was Bannigan. Oh, right, right. You had the black secretary. No, that was Mannix. I had a sheepdog. Right. right. It's just hysterically funny. I've seen it. I must have watched it ten times. Adam plays a former TV detective who, because he received a honorary crime-fighting badge from the police... This was given to me in 1972. Now, some 10 or 15 years after his show has been canceled, <laughs> takes his crime-fighting seriously. He plays a guy who's a little off-kilter. Uh, it's a big stretch. Good evening. I have a home. Hello, nice to be indoors. Hi there. The sidewalk is my pillow. It is probably the funniest half hour television show I may have ever seen. And Adam was just, you know, I don't know anybody else who could have done it. I'm gonna pay a visit to a certain auto painting shop, one that's close to the crimes, and yet large enough to tuck away a stolen car or two without anyone noticing. We only charge 60 bucks to paint these things, so we like to move them in and out pretty quick. <laughs> I'll bet you do. Okay, guys, get to it. Oh, Phil, if there's anything else you'd care for me to do, just let me know. Is he gay? Hey, it don't matter, as long as he does a good job. Just give me the signal, I'll deliver. Look, man, we're not into that stuff. That's not what I heard. By the 1990s, Adam had not only reconciled himself to his Batman past, Thanks to a run of high-quality projects on TV and film, West proved he could embrace his old alter ego and move forward as an actor. And finally, best known as Batman from the classic TV series, he can be seen in the soon-to-be-released film Joyride, Adam West! During the late 1990s, Adam West balanced his quiet family life in Idaho with choice work on film and television. One of the actor's favorite projects was the talk show, Politically Incorrect. His appearances were so popular that by the year 2000, the 72-year-old had appeared nine times. Adam West? Wow. I know. <laughs> Holy wow! Yep. <laughs> I think you meant to and say. all that incredible dialogue, it is. right? It's always incredible. You are larger than life. Anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> well, he's a great guest for me. He's um, funny, he's well read. You know, he still gets a huge round of applause. They hang on his every word. Words come out of no other human being quite the way they come out of Adam. This is an amazing statistic. In the outskirts of Paris, there are 200,000 people living in polygamy and many oh, of them oh pygmies in paris 
Do <laughs> not pick me. <laughs> I mean, just because we're, because we're short, there's just no reason to persecute them. Many stars from the 60s certainly are not welcome on politically incorrect Howard Stern, David Letterman, The Tonight Show, but Adam is. He and William Shatner are probably the two icons from the 60s who are working more now than they did really 30 years ago. I get a phone call in the late 90s for Adam to appear in Argentina. He says, well, Fred, I'm very big in Argentina. I'm like the Beatles down there. And I said to myself, yeah, sure he is. We get off the plane. There's several hundred news guys. 25,000 people over three days showed up. What is not just? I love watching my dad interact with his fans because his fans revere him and he doesn't disappoint them. He is the most genuine, um, nice person and he will speak to each individual um, personally. He gives them everything they expected. When we did Batman, we tried to do it so that when you were young, you were little niños, uh, say, you would enjoy all of the excitement, adventure, color. What is that, chicos? Mystery. Misterio, la acción, el color. What's he seeing? Who are you? <laughs> More than three decades after catching his first Gotham City criminal, Adam West continues to celebrate his image as a pop culture icon. He understands exactly who and where he is, and he's happy with it, which makes him appealing. There's always a danger when you meet people who you've admired from afar. They will have feet of clay and they'll be jerks, but, you know, he's a great example of somebody who was not. He's a good guy. My dad is an everyday guy that treats everybody the same, you know, fairly and nicely. And even if he's down here in Los Angeles, he would be sitting there having lunch with the grips or the stagehands. Or, uh, he's just a real down-to-earth person. He complains from time to time about Batman being typecast, but I think that if he had to go back and do it again, he would accept the role. Just because he's had the opportunity that most people don't get. I mean, he's the hero to millions of people and he's taught so many good lessons to children that he wouldn't trade that for anything. I know that Adam is extremely proud of his work on the Batman series. The show was an alternative universe, and Adam was the king of that universe. Actors, uh, I think they want some kind of acceptance or communication. Some are even hungry for love, I guess, from their audience. I get a lot of that. I'm probably the luckiest guy around. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure working with you. If you need me again, here's my headshot.